because I used to play tennis at a decent level, and my racket used to fly out of my hand, and I could never understand why. I started having symptoms where I couldn't stand on my tiptoes, and I was diagnosed in 2019 with ALS. At the time I was told you have between three to five years to live, and that what's going to happen is I'm going to become increasingly paralysed, unable to move and unable to breathe ultimately, and that there are no treatments. And that seems to me to be an unacceptable thing to be told in a modern world with a modern healthcare system. ALS, or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, is the most common form of motor neuron disease. ALS is a really difficult disease to treat for a number of reasons. The cause is not known in most cases of ALS. We think it's a mix of biological, genetic and environmental factors. You know, I went to, without a doubt, the darkest point in my life. It was incredibly tough. But once you got through that point and you're trying to think, well, how long have I got left? I just had to try and set some goals for the future. So I thought, do you know, I wonder if I could do something for the MND community that would benefit raise awareness in the community. With the grace of God, you know, we now have three Guinness swimming records, and I think that's enough now. <laughs> I wanted to be getting involved with campaigning on behalf of the ALS community. I, I just felt that that's how I could give back and channel, I suppose, a more positive attitude. Since that diagnosis, spent the last year and a half or so, trying to understand what might be possible in terms of supporting innovation to help develop solutions for people like myself. The Longitude Prize on ALS is a five-year, £7.5 million global challenge prize. And we're looking for scientists to come together, computational biologists, ALS and neurodegenerative specialists in teams to identify and to validate novel drug targets for ALS. What's really attractive about the prize is the way that it brings together different communities. So it will bring together our experts in MND biology and treatment, but it'll link them up with people who are used to dealing with large data sets and analysing them. ChallengeWorks has spent the last two years making connections with data holders across the globe to try and bring as much relevant data to the challenge as possible. We're really excited about the potential for AI in drug discovery. So it has the capability now to look at huge amounts of data very quickly and uncover new patterns that we wouldn't have been able to see before. AI obviously is at the head of innovation and it has the possibility of saving millions of lives. We're going to be opening up the data through an easy-to-use platform, providing participants in the prize with expertise in how to handle that data and also compute to allow them to do their analyses. I think that's where the power of this is. We've got this like much stronger level of understanding from the research community and then we've got these AI and computational methods that are really groundbreaking and together I think that's where the magic will happen. We invite applications globally and we take the top 20 of those applicants through the first phase. That's a nine month piece of work done all in the computer to identify new drug targets against the data that we're providing. From the 20 teams in the first stage, we then go down to 10. And here we're asking teams to take their findings from the first stage and start to pull out some validation protocols and prioritise the drug targets they've found, really to build a plethora of evidence that these will be effective against ALS. And then the third will happen all in the wet lab, and that's the validation stage. And then we'll end with five finalist teams, and of those finalist teams, one will win the Longitude Prize on ALS. Something for me that I never thought was going to happen once I was diagnosed would be the thought that I would get better or stabilised. Tofersen is a gene therapy that was an effective treatment but only for the patients that have the SOD1 gene variant and unfortunately it is only 2% of the ALS community and since I've been on it I haven't had any further progression of my ALS symptoms. I actually now have a real possibility of being able to go back to work next year and that's why treatments and cures is so, so important. We should discover a number of targets that have the potential to be turned into drugs and treatments. In an ideal world, that would be repurposed drugs because that would be much quicker, but also potentially 
and quite likely new drugs that will require new molecules. That will take longer, but at least we are bringing forward the time at which that would be possible. Now a cure might not be in my lifetime, but it might be in my children's lifetime or my grandchildren's lifetime. It's not just about the person who lives with MND, it's about their families as well, because sometimes this can be hereditary and it impacts everyone in the world. All we want is to help people in this community live a longer, more fulfilling life and that's what the prize really will do. I'm 55, I'm still here. I've had a wonderful life with my kids and I still intend to have brilliant moments and memories together. Now is the time for a treatment solution to be developed for ALS. We've got the data sets, we've got strong foundational knowledge. This is potentially transformational for drug discovery. The impact could be huge. So bring your expertise, bring your knowledge, bring your tech to help the Longitude Prize on ALS be a success.